I didn't want to make this video, but you made me. That's right. You guys kept asking me, LJ, should we use regular OBS or Streamlabs OBS? Today, I'm going to reveal everything you need to know in order to choose between the two. But more importantly, I'm going to give you guys the truth behind this debate that apparently nobody else wants to talk about. Let's go. Hi, I, um, I'm LJ, um, and I've been using Streamlabs for 16 months now. I know, I know. I first started using Streamlabs OBS when I uh, became a streamer 16 months ago. It's so beginner focused. It comes with everything installed, all built into one program without needing a single plugin or extra tool. Once I downloaded it, I could pretty much go live instantly. But my wife recently said to me that it's either I give up Streamlabs OBS or I give up her. And so I want to turn my life around and become a respectable streamer. But to do that, I hear I need to start using OBS. So for the past two weeks, I've been using OBS in order to see, well, is it actually better than Streamlabs OBS? Does it do everything that everyone says? Does it cure every disease? That's what everyone seems to say. Or is this just another battle of titans? Apple versus Google, Xbox versus PlayStation, Mario versus Sonic. Today, I'm going to be answering all the questions you guys gave me about OBS and Streamlabs. I'm going to be breaking down a lot of common misconceptions and myths about actually both tools. And we're going to be telling you guys which one you should be using and which one I'm going to be using moving forward. And yes, I did say that I was going to be revealing a hard truth about the Streamlabs versus OBS debate, which will be at the end of the video. So if you want to, you can use the time codes to skip straight to the summary of the entire thing, or you can get into the nitty gritty and understand which ones are better for which. Quickly, I need to explain to a lot of you guys what the difference between OBS and Streamlabs OBS is. Because at the end of the day, they're actually not that different. When you download Streamlabs OBS and you download OBS, they're incredibly similar. This is because Streamlabs OBS is actually using OBS as a base and then putting a skin over the top of it, as well as adding a bunch of extra features and plugins already installed. But essentially at its core, OBS and Slobs are the same thing, except OBS is the bones and the muscle. And then Streamlabs OBS has put a skin, some hair and teeth on it. This analogy got really grim really quickly. Let's cover all the pros and cons of Streamlabs OBS first, because it's one I'm most familiar with. To start with, Streamlabs OBS is incredibly beginner focused. You might look at the user interface and say it is confusing, but I promise you this is so much simpler for a beginner to get set up. And you can say whatever you want in the comments about how I'm wrong and you hate the UI, but I promise you I work with thousands of new streamers every single week. And when it comes to OBS versus Streamlabs, Streamlabs is much easier for them and much easier for the masses to get set up. As I said earlier, it comes with all of the tools you're going to need pre-built into it. So you don't need to install anything else once you've got Streamlabs OBS. Chat box to monitor your chat is right there. Your event queue to monitor the followers, subs, and anything else that happens is there as well. You want alerts? Just add an alert box. You want chat on screen? Add a chat box. Literally everything is included in a single program and platform. You won't need to get anything else. You also have a really simple installation process for overlays, which can be really tricky for a new streamer to understand as well. You just find a free overlay, like the ones in the description that we made ourselves, that includes a dot overlay. 99% of overlays these days will include a dot overlay. You go into your scene collection and bam, you install it. It's done. OBS has something similar. However, it doesn't quite work the same. And I'll show you guys later why that one I think is a little bit worse than this. It also comes with a chatbot called Cloudbot that you can adjust both in the program and on their dashboard. And you can use Control Z to undo as well as Control Shift Z to redo inside Streamlabs OBS. They've had this for a very long time. And most importantly, I like how they have a very easy selective recording system. After a few clicks of a button, I can say while I'm live, record my entire stream, but don't record my alerts when they pop up giving me a nice clean gameplay and webcam overlay. It's not all sunshine and roses of Streamlabs OBS though. No, you have to pay to use it. <gasps> no, you don't. I don't know why people keep pushing this misconception around. The only paid part of Streamlabs OBS is if you want to use Streamlabs Prime, which gives you access to a bunch of alerts and overlays, some plugins that they've also brought on board. But I've never used this in my last 16 months. I don't really know anyone who's needed to use Prime. So at the end of the day, I just consider it a free program. The seriously big cons of Streamlabs OBS though, no jokes aside, are that it really doesn't give you much flexibility. It doesn't give you plugins that you can install. It doesn't give you the ability to use things like the Auron board. Pretty much if you want to have an incredibly technically advanced stream, you're not going to be able to get there using Streamlabs OBS. For me though, the absolute biggest downside to Streamlabs OBS is the alert system. 
OJ, you just said the alerts box was so easy. Yes, it is easy to set up, but when you want to start getting really fancy with your alerts and getting really technical with them or trying to become unique, then it gets really, really frustrating really fast. I'm actually on a quest to try and make some really unique alerts using green screens and whatnot. And honestly, I found a solution, but it isn't Streamlabs OBS and it isn't OBS based. So I'll cover that in a second. You're probably thinking right now, LJ's biased. He didn't say about the fact that Streamlabs OBS is incredibly resource intensive. Well, actually, I want to cover that in the OBS section compared to the Streamlabs section. So let's move on to that now. OBS is the bare bones blank slate for the user. And this is honestly its biggest pro. When you download OBS before you add anything else to it, it is incredibly customizable. You can add plugins that don't work with slobs. You can add extra tools. You can add docs. You can do everything you want. It is open source, meaning that there are so many fantastic developers out there making things for OBS. This means that while OBS by itself might not be the perfect broadcasting software, you can turn it into your perfect broadcasting software, which is something you can't do with Streamlabs OBS. And not just turn it into your perfect broadcasting software, but because of all the tools and things you can install into it, it means that you can turn your stream into an incredibly technical and unique style. If you see any streams like Nutties or Baja or any of these people, often they're using OBS because the things they're doing just require a lot more technical know-how. It just doesn't work inside slobs because slobs doesn't support 90% of the plugins out there. Another big win for OBS is that because it is the bare bones and that Streamlabs is a offshoot or a skin that goes over the top of OBS, it means that if a big update comes out for OBS, they'll get that first and then it will be a while before Streamlabs gets that update. So for example, right now, a new update just released called the track mat stingers, which I'm incredibly excited about because as a stinger designer and an overlay designer, it's going to give me a lot to play with. But none of those are going to work inside Streamlabs OBS until the guys over at Streamlabs can figure out if the new update works with everything else they have installed. So a lot of features and updates OBS will get first. Except for the fact that for the last 16 months, I've been using Streamlabs OBS to control Z and control shift Z redo, which is something that we only just got inside OBS this week. So this is a win, yes, and a no. Depends on the feature, but most of the time, yes, OBS gets the big updates first. OBS, unarguably, is a lot more stable. It tends to have a lot less crashing, and generally, you're not going to have as many problems. But, obviously, because it is a bare-bones blank slate, any plugins, anything else you install will add its own set of problems and its own need to troubleshoot if things go wrong. As I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest wins that OBS gets is the fact that it is a lot less CPU-intensive meaning that you've got more resources in order to play games and to encode your stream. Except this is an odd one because CPU usage really comes down to your hardware, the broadcasting settings, and how many sources you're using at the same time. I ran all the same overlays on all the same settings, canvas sizes, everything, and I tried to test which one used more CPU. And I didn't actually notice a difference. That said, the differences could have been tucked away in a place that I don't really use, such as browser sources or something else. I also have a very good PC, so at the end of the day, it might not be something that would ever affect me, but it will affect lower end PCs. That said, I feel like I still should have noticed a difference because I use so many animated WebMs inside my overlays. I'm a slut for an animated asset. Please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there isn't a difference in CPU usage. I'm just saying that personally, I didn't see it. But also at the same time, OBS is bare bones. It doesn't have anything built into it. If you decide to add a bunch of plugins to it, it's going to use more CPU, the same way that Streamlabs has a chat box and a whole heap of other features built into it. So it'll probably use more. One of the big downsides I feel for OBS, and if I'm completely wrong about this, please let me know, but it seems to lack an easy install process. For example, the dot overlays inside of Streamlabs OBS are so easy. But all of the OBS one-click install setups that you see are usually done by big companies who can afford someone to custom script the installs for you. But I have found a solution. If you do have Streamlabs OBS and you have a .overlay file, you can install that .overlay file into Streamlabs OBS, then open both programs up, go to OBS, Scene Collection, Import, and it will either pull up all your overlays on your PC, but if it doesn't, you can manually go to where Slobs is default installing overlays. I've actually put the folder location for the default in the description, so you can use that to guide yourself to find them as well. If you put this in, it'll bring up all of the overlays found there. You can sort by last edited if you've just installed the pack, and bam, it brings it over entirely. With everything I've just said to you about Streamlabs OBS and OBS, I'm sure you're all sitting there and thinking, 
Well, LJ's definitely not moving to OBS. He barely said anything positive about it. Sorry, I am actually changing from Streamlabs over to OBS, but not because OBS is better than Streamlabs OBS to me, but because Stream Elements Alerts are a better system and a better tool than Streamlabs Alerts, at least for me and the stage of my journey that I am at currently. But that doesn't mean you should be changing to OBS and Stream Elements. I will cover whether or not you should be changing in a second, as well as reveal the truth about this entire debate that no one ever talks about. If you're a beginner, then you need to make sure you install Stream Elements into your OBS. Using it to change OBS from base to Stream Elements OBS Live is crucial. It adds a chat doc for you, it adds an event queue, and it sorts out so much of the things you need to set up when you're just starting out. But most importantly, Stream Elements lets you set up amazing alerts. Their system is so much better. Let me show you. It is incredibly customizable. It's also so simple. I love the visual editing of it rather than having to change so much stuff and then hit save, hit test while keeping slobs open in the background so it tests it over there. Inside Stream Elements, I can literally just click preview and then see it all visually play out here. And the fact that I can set up multiple alert boxes in multiple locations inside one source and then easily filter what the alert box will display while using Stream Elements is amazing. That means if I want follower alerts to go off over here, but I want subscriber alerts to go off over here, I can set that up so easy. I can do this inside slobs as well, technically. However, I need to set up multiple alert boxes that are all different sizes, move my alerts around completely differently, and it is just such a pain. It is too clunky to do. Whereas with Stream Elements, it's literally one 1920 by 1080 browser source that I chuck inside OBS, and then everything just works. Truthfully, I'm not even gonna do anything crazy technical with my actual OBS. I'm barely gonna use plugins. I'm not gonna really gonna go nuts with it at all. I'm just switching over because I wanna use Stream Elements alerts and they tend to work better with OBS. If it wasn't for Stream Elements, I probably wouldn't be making this change at all anytime soon because I just don't need big technical showy effects on my stream. It's not something I wanna do, but that's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just my needs. But which one should you use? And what is the dirty little secret between this entire debate that no one's talking about? Well, I usually say if you're a beginner and you're not looking to get too technical with your overlays and everything else, Go with Streamlabs OBS. It's so easy to get set up and start streaming. Or you could go with Stream Elements OBS Live, the plugin for OBS. It'll also do the same thing. It's just a little bit trickier. Both will get you set up pretty much instantly though. But then if you want to get technical or really start customizing things, I recommend going with OBS and also going and checking out Nutty. He's a fantastic creator and he focuses purely on OBS. And the stuff he does is actually insane. But you've watched this far. So it's time to tell you the secret that no one in this industry is willing to say for some reason. Come here, come in nice and close. Don't tell anyone else this. Whether you use OBS or Streamlabs OBS doesn't matter. As long as the audience is enjoying themselves, your stream is crystal clear, it works for you, and there's no problems. At the end of the day, both programs are practically identical and it doesn't actually matter. If you need to switch between any of them, it's so easy because Stream Elements, Streamlabs, and OBS have all built in tools help you switch between the two programs pretty much at the drop of a hat. Once again, for the people in the back, if your stream is high quality and clear, if it sounds good, if it looks good, if your audience is enjoying themselves and you don't need anything else, then please just use whichever one works for you and stop insulting people if they don't use the right one.